Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So uh, dad and I are in the, in the shop again working on the tractors trying to get them ready for the tractor show. So uh, I'll show you what he's doing on the GP right now. He's he's so proud he got the original spark arresters for the uh, exhaust. So he's working on installing them. These were, square nuts. yeah he's got to have, he wanted the authentic square nuts that hold all this together. So what he's doing is we got these long bolts. We're gonna thread them into where they uh, are just flush here at the bottom. And then we're gonna cut them off and we're gonna put, we're gonna thread this and we're gonna put the square nuts on it like it was originally, it's what it looks like in the original picture. So uh, he's all excited that his exhaust is gonna be the way it should be. So we got the, uh, Bottom water pipe back on. We just gotta get the, the uh, clamps tightened back up. So that's done. And we got the uh, air breather painted. The only thing we haven't gotten yet is a uh, brass plug to put in here because they look really nice. That's just a nice uh, accent piece to put on them. So you actually thread that plug out and it allows the dirt to fall out that collects in here for anybody that didn't know that. So I'm working on the A tonight. I'm going to get uh, get the uh, block ready for the pistons to go back in. I ordered a 5.5 inch ball home from Napa. Uh, these are about $135 if anybody needs one. And uh, Napa Knox has two extra ones because they uh, ordered three instead of one. So if anybody needs one, run to Napa Knox and they have two of them in stock. So that's a 5.5 inch. So, which is kind of hard to come by a ball hone that big. So, I've already honed one cylinder wall to clean it up, or one cylinder, I should say. But it looks really good in there. So, I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera up and I will get the other one honed. I'll show you how to do it. And uh, then, possibly, depends on how late it is after I'm done, we uh, might go ahead and put a piston and rod back in. Oh, I gotta switch rods and the pistons yet. I haven't done that yet. So I did find out, I was looking these over, and these are original pistons. They are not aftermarket or anything, they are original John Deere pistons, which is kind of interesting. They've never been changed out. So the rings are really good yet, so I'm just going to reuse these rings. There's nothing wrong with them, they're not collapsed, they're not broken or anything, they fit in the grooves tight, so we're just going to reuse them, because a set of rings is almost $200. So I figure if there's nothing wrong with them, there's no point in replacing them. So anyways, let me get the camera set up and we'll get honing on this. Okay, so let's get started honing this cylinder. What we're going to do is we're going to wipe out this crap that's in there. Just brake cleaner and stuff. Get that wiped out and we're going to soak it good with WD-40. Get it real good and slicked up. So I've got the half inch Milwaukee drill with the hone in it because it's a little much for a cordless drill. Let me get it started in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the handle of the drill up to about the threads right here on this stud and that is just far enough to get in the crankcase but not come out of the uh, cylinder. So we're just going to keep going back and forth and we'll spray some more WD-40 on it until we're satisfied.
It should be good. It should be plenty. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Nice and clean and well. Oh yeah, I'm happy with that. Don't see any visible issues. I think we're ready to put pistons back in. So as you can see, they're nice and clean now. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spray them down with some WD-40 just so we don't get any surface rust in them. So in case I don't get to put the uh, pistons back in the night, we don't want to worry about them rusting from moisture or anything. So now I'm going to go ahead and switch rods in these pistons. We're going to start with number one, which number one has a dot here, and it is stamp number one. So it's got one dot, so that means it's number one. Get the snap ring out. And we'll slide the wrist pin out. I'll try to. Maybe. There it is. We got the wrist pin out. Them are still fairly tight. Yeah, them are good. Them are okay. So them rods are junk. But the piston has top stamped here. So this is the top of the piston. So we need to line it up with the top, the dots, which dots right there that means this is number one rod and these these are stamped here so the cap stamped and the rod stamped so we need to get some assembly lube this is the same stuff that I use on my pulling truck stuff's really good stuff just uh, stay lube engine assembly lube been using it for a long time never had an issue with it huh Go ahead and lube these up real good. They're already clean. So top, our dots are up. I'm so glad my sister left these tables here after her uh, little flower episode she had in the shop. These tables are working out really nice. There we go. So that one's ready to go back in. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and switch that rod out. Sit this on the floor. Get moved up. Let's go ahead and do this one real quick. Let's see. Top. Hang that toe like this for quite a bit. Is there a snap ring on? Just going out. Check it. Looks good. Feels good anyways. Now, oops, a leaf or something on there. I got it. Now it's not like these engines run high RPMs. They only run 950 RPM wide open. So if there's a little movement in them, it's not like it's a high performance engine. And a lot of times if they have movement in them, they've had movement in them for the last 40 some years. It's not like we're going to be using these tractors 12 hours a day, 7 days a week. They're toys at this point. 
we want them right, but they don't have to be extremely perfect. But this one will be a good running tractor when put back together. Our rods and pistons are put together. We'll just have to take the caps off and then we can uh, get them put back in the tractor. Now we're going to get ready to put our piston number one back in the tractor, which number one is flywheel side. So we have number one piston here and rod. So just to, yep, just to make, sure, make sure I didn't switch them on accident off camera or something. So, got the ring compressor, got the assembly lube. I'm gonna go ahead and lube this uh, piston up real good. So there's no, it's not getting stuck in the ring compressor on the way in. There's no dry starts when we first start the tractor. This will all burn out eventually. Might smoke for a little bit. It's all right. I just want to make sure it slides out of that ring compressor easy. Might as well put a little up here. All right. So I got the rod bolts still in it, holding the shims in place for now, just so I don't get them mixed up. And because I'm gonna put it together and uh, see what it's like, and then either add shims or take shims out. After reading the original owner's manual for an A, it comes down to just getting the rods so they don't bind up. So it's not very scientific. It's just get them so they're just right. It should be good. Put a ring presser over here. Work it down over there. Take a quarter inch ratchet. We'll tighten it up. That'll draw all the rings in so that when we tap it back in the cylinder, they'll go in. So let's take it over to the tractor and uh, see if we can get it put back in there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this cylinder back together. It's got number one, left side of the tractor. Get started in the hole. Get the top mark up. There we go. Now hopefully Got my ring compressor a little too tight. <clears throat> Just a hair too tight. Loosen up a little bit. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. What's up? It should be up. Okay. The studs in the bottom hole. Yeah. 
Yeah, I put it so the rod was up. Okay, so we're ready to reinstall our rod cap. Dad helped me uh, get that rod started on the uh, crankshaft, which kind of a two guy job. I didn't want to didn't want to let it hit the crank while I was trying to drive it in by myself. So he uh, assisted me. We didn't quite get a good video of that, but you kind of got the idea what's going on here. So I'm going to lube that up. Make sure we got plenty of lube and this rod cap. So hopefully with a little bit of luck, it's pretty close shim wise. We'll see what happens. So we got the top of our cap. Number one, we want number one up. Go ahead and drop it down in here. And Well, let's try. There we go. I had to move the crank a little bit. I didn't really want to move the crank, but I had to. There we go. So we got a rod cap back on. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our nuts back on. We got to get our nuts snug and then we got to tap the rod up and down a little bit to make sure that it is centered on the crankshaft. Should have made this hole just a hair bigger to get your hands in. I bet bigger tractor though, bigger hole. Oh, there was my needle nose pliers I was looking for earlier. They're over there. I'm just gonna wiggle them up and down. Take a hammer. Just gonna snug them up. Nice. I'm loosen this one back up a little bit. Seat. Oh, that's nice. I think we got lucky. Yeah, that's real nice. The book says just to make sure that they have some play in them but not too tight to the point where they're gonna bind up. That feels really nice. That really does feel nice. I think we're gonna leave it at that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tighten that castle nut till I come to a hole where I can get my cotter pin in. I don't see it yet. Where's the holes at? Must be in the side where I can't see them. I think they're right there. Okay, I gotta go find my cotter pins. So uh, that rod and piston's back in, so all I gotta do is do the other one. So there we go. Our uh, cotter pins are back in, folded over, not bound up. Turns over freely, quiet, looks nice. 
I think that's going to be it for tonight. I am pretty tired and I think I'm going to go home now. So, uh, might edit this video tonight and get it put up. Or I might wait till tomorrow and throw the other rod in too and piston and get that on video. I don't know yet. We'll see what happens. But, uh, anyways, thank you for watching for this evening. I greatly appreciate it. And, uh, follow me if you want to see more tractor projects. Got a lot more coming up. Oh, let's go check out the GP exhaust. Before we uh, leave for this evening, I'll show you. Dad, uh, let's zoom this. There we go. Oh, the new front tires for the 720 that rub. We got to get different dish rims for them. So uh, anyways, this is a Dad's spark arrester. Got it all put together. Looks pretty nice. He's going to uh, actually replace this pipe yet. We got some pipe coming for it because you can see it's got a hole in it. So uh, there's some spot welds we're going to cut off. Put a new length of pipe, tear all this apart, and then he's going to uh, sandblast it and uh, get it painted muffler black. So it's going to look real nice. Can't wait to see this tractor when we get it put back together. It's not going to be painted for a while. Eventually it will be painted. Got all new pet cocks for it. Um, going to get some new tires for it here pretty soon. We're actually thinking about putting this tractor back on steel. So that, that might be something that we do in the next or near future is we're going to put it back on steel wheels. That's how it was original. And then, uh, at one point they put, uh, rims with rubber tires on it, cut the spokes off and put, uh, welded rims on and stuff. So dad and I have been talking about it quite a bit and we think we want to put it back on cleated steel wheels, which I think would be kind of cool, really. A little hard on the shop floor. We'll have to run it in on some conveyor belt. But uh, anyways, I think I'm just going to end this video right here for tonight. We'll start another one uh, tomorrow afternoon probably. See what happens. So anyways, thank you for watching. Greatly appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next one.